Today, I'd like to talk about the abstract approach to covariant derivative. So, um, right now, I'll be listing the basic properties of the derivative, which will serve as the definition. And then, uh, we'll be introducing various properties, physical interpretation, the consequences of those definitions. So, uh, right at the outset, I'd like to uh, clarify one thing that the covariant derivative we'll be talking about is called not just covariant derivative, but symmetric covariant derivative. Symmetric covariant derivative. So, let me first give you a little bit of context behind defining covariant derivative. And uh, in simple words, the concept would be the fact that uh, defining a derivative of a scalar field uh, on a curved space is not difficult, right? So if you have a sphere, let's say, and there is a vector field uh, defined in uh, some neighborhood, right? Let's take a neighborhood, and there are vector fields, and there is a line, right? And you want to uh, differentiate a function that exists in that neighborhood along that line. So, which is basically uh, the concept of directional derivative, right? And that's not very difficult. So, if the line is parameterized by, let's say, lambda, and at some point you have some value of the function, uh, at some other points you have a different value of the function and you compare those, uh, you, uh, you derive the rate of change with respect to the separation in parameters and that gives you a derivative. So differentiating uh, a function, let's say f, uh, along a curve whose tangent vector is u, right, is basically that a vector u acting on the function f, which is also written with the notation of directional derivative, right? And so all the derivatives that we can define in a curved space uh, should follow this definition. That means uh, this is a special case of all types of derivative. Then when that derivative acts on a function, it should uh, as an ordinary derivative, right? However, the problem arises when we want to extend to this concept towards uh, differentiating a vector, because let's say there is a vector field, right, on this surface. Um, and you want to differentiate that vector field along a curve. So the similar situation here, but uh, there is a vector here, right? Uh, so let's draw it by a different color. So there is a vector here, uh, and which resides on the tangent space uh, at that point, and there is a vector again here which resides on a tangent space at this point, but those tangent spaces are different tangent spaces and they have nothing to do with each other, right? So the problem is there is no way to compare vectors from different tangent spaces. This, this tangent, tangent uh, lives in a tangent space which is attached to a point here and this tangent uh, vector is attached to a tangent space that resides here and they do not overlap. So there is no way of comparing a vector that resides on this tangent space uh, and not with another vector that resides on this tangent space without uh, somehow dragging one to the other. And this is very diff difficult um, to do in a curved space because uh, what exactly is the rule uh, to uh, drag a vector along a curve, right? Because uh, a vector may change 
its nature as we drag it along a curve. Uh, and besides, what is even meant by dragging a vector along a curve? That that notion does not exist, uh, you know, intrinsically in a manifold uh, or in a curve space, so to speak. Uh, so that means we need an extra layer of structure of whatever thing that we know to exist uh, on a curve space, right? Uh, so in a curve space, the natural structures would be points and curves uh, and so on, but uh, the concept of uh, vectors or vectors being dragged along and being compared to other vectors of other tenure space is uh, not intrinsic or inherent to the concept of curve space at all. So let me uh, put it uh, on this way, right? So whatever we will be develop is not an intrinsic structure, it's been imposed on top of the natural structures that come along with a smooth uh, space like a sphere uh, or a surface or something like that, right? So having said that, uh, now let's go on to uh, specify the basic properties of uh, the covariant derivative uh, in an abstract sense, right? So for that, we do the following. So the first property of a covariant derivative, and remember, since we have choices, there may be uh, more than one type of covariant derivative. And in fact, spoiler alert, uh, there exists an infinite number of covariant derivatives on a smooth surface. So, property number one. Uh, a covariant derivative, and we'll be using uh, the notation uh, of Nabla, right, uh, with a with an upper bar, uh, and there will be a vector along which is a tangent vector along that curve, uh, the curve along which we would like to drag along the structures so that we may compare it to something else and then uh, find the difference. Uh, in other words, differentiate it. So this will go on notation, right? It's an operator uh, that is acting along this vector. So u here is a vector, right? And uh, what did we talk about at the beginning? The derivative of a function, the covariant derivative of a function, uh, f, is the same as uh, the vector acting on that function. And that is of course the same as the directional derivative of uh, that function along that tangent. So it's not a field that along which uh, we are differentiating about, it's a vector. Right, let's move on to the second property. Right, so this is where things start to diverge from our typical concepts. And that is the property of additivity. Right? Additivity. Right? So we'll be calling this property additivity 1 because we know that there will be a second property of additivity and that we'll also be talking about, but this is sort of expected of any derivative operator uh, because a differentiation is a linear operation. So we will impose this natural law, uh, which is in in inspired by uh, the derivative on a flat space, right? So a covariant derivative, again, this is a vector acting on vector fields, right? Uh, not just vector fields, but the sum of uh, two vector fields, 
is the sum of the covariant derivative of those individual vector fields. So, covariant derivative of V with respect to U plus the covariant derivative of W with respect to vector U. And so these two vector fields, these two inputs of the covariant der derivatives uh, are vector fields. Vector fields. This is a vector. It doesn't have to be a vector field, although this can be, by the way. Uh, there's no restriction that they, this cannot be a vector field. But uh, this can be a vector, right? Uh, which is expected for a covariant derivative. But uh, this will have to be vector fields. So that's property number two. Although uh, sometimes uh, this is listed uh, very uh, at the very bottom of the list, uh, but uh, the ordering uh, wouldn't matter today. Number three, right? Um, so. 2 was additivity, number 3 is a rule which is called symmetry. And remember, we are defining a covariant derivative which is symmetric, so this is essential to the naming of the operation, right? And if this doesn't hold, then we'll have a covariant derivative, but which will, which will not be symmetric. So the symmetric, symmetry rule goes as follows. So the covariant derivative, right, uh, with respect to u of v, right, minus the covariant derivative of u with respect to v. So in this case, u and v both will have to be uh, vector fields. Vector fields, right? Uh, since both of them are being differentiated, uh, we do not have uh, the luxury of imposing the restriction that these uh, can be vectors. This time, they are going to be fields. So if you have two vector fields, u and v, and if you take the covariant derivative with respect to uh, one another, and then subtract it, that will be the same as taking the commutator of those two vector fields. Excuse me. This is the commutator of u and v. Right. Very, very important property for the covariant derivative that we are interested in. Sometimes this symmetry property does not hold. Right. Sometimes uh, the left hand side uh, subtracted from the right hand side gives you a non-zero result. In that case, we say this is this field, this covariant derivative, uh, has torsion. So uh, the symmetric covariant derivative, in other words, uh, are also called a torsionless covariant derivative. So um, that's rule number three. Let's move on to rule number uh, four, uh, which we call the chain rule. Chain rule. So, uh, what does it talk about? It basically talks about uh, the covariant derivative of a vector field V multiplied by a scalar function. So this time u can be a vector and v is a vector field uh, and f can be a scalar field or a function on the space on which we are defining the covariant derivative. And this will have to follow the chain rule, and the chain rule basically says oh, this will be equal to f times the covariant derivative of v with respect to u plus 
uh, v sine the covariant derivative of f with respect to u but that as we have just discussed is the same as u acting on f and that my friends uh, is called the chain rule all right by the way is going to give you a number if you uh, if you restrict it to a point number five and uh, this is the last one it it basically also uh, gives us the additivity rule additivity rule number two additivity right I just made a small mistake additivity two and this talks about the linearity in the vector with respect to which we are taking the differentiation that means this one's here. What it basically says is that a, a covariant derivative with respect to this linear combination of vectors uh, where we have a is a number or a function times a vector u plus b is a number of function times the vector field v and uh, we let's say we're taking the derivative of the vector field w this is going to be a times the derivative of w with respect to u plus b times the derivative of w with respect to the vector v so w has to be a vector field, whereas uh, both u and v are vectors, and a and b can be either numbers or functions. So these are uh, the basic uh, properties of a covariant derivative that means if this operator lambda e, with respect to a vector v or u uh, wants to be a covariant derivative uh, then or at least a symmetric covariant derivative then it will have to follow this five basic properties